Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Now, the public has been and remains intensely interested in the subject of psychopaths. This morning, we're going to hear from Sandra L. Brown. She is the founder of the Institute for Relational Harm Reduction and Public Pathology Education. Now, after spending 25 years in the field, working hundreds of countless face-to-face -face time hours hours with victims of psychopaths, Sandra wanted to know who the most disordered people on the planet wanted as their partner. She became interested in knowing if there were specific traits that they targeted. The results that she found were fascinating. Is there a common profile that women share who fall for these psychopaths, or I shouldn't say fall, get trapped by these psychopaths? Mm -hmm. Well, there, there is, and it's, it's uh, been a long time coming. At, at 25 years of working in this field, I kept seeing the same type of person over and over again. And um, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, it, we work uh, mostly in an outpatient setting that is not a community agency. So we're, you know, a private um, practice. And so people that were coming in were, were not necessarily people from shelters or things like that. Um, and our average client had a bachelor's degree or higher. Mm -hmm. Um, and were professional women, doctors, attorneys, um, you know, every walk uh, of life, um, super professional, and yet, and in their jobs, did such um, a great job. And then there's this subsector, this thing going on in their relationships in which they might be super astute in their career and in the interpersonal part of that they w were drawn into a relationship you know with a psychopath and so when you look at that on the surface you think how can that be how can there be a teacher a therapist a doctor an attorney on one hand that is so proficient and skilled and on the other hand you know, end up um, in a relationship with such profound pathology. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to research that, uh, there was no research. There was absolutely none. There was all this research on women, for instance, in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, sort of the profile of that that did not fit the profile of the women that we were seeing. And, um, you know, not all psychopaths are violent. And, and um, so those statistics really weren't, weren't helping us. And I kept looking and looking sort of for the, the, the profile of women um, who love psychopaths, and there was nothing. And so um, several years ago, we did uh, the first research project in looking at is there is there something there uh, um, given the nature of psychopaths sociopaths narcissists what they do is not random they target they, they are predator based and so they have someone that works for them and so who is that person? Again, if we go back to public pathology education, if we can figure out who they target, we can know who's at risk. Considering that they are predatory based, meaning uh, what they do is not by accident, that we began to ask the question, is there um, a person, are there traits that, who are they targeting? Who are they attracted to? Who works for them in terms of what they are seeking um, to get out of a relationship? And so um, that's sort of what motivated us to begin 
to um, look and test uh, women who have been in relationships with psychopaths. And it's kind of, you know, a hard, it's a hard thing to do because um, you don't ever want to imply that a victim has done anything that has warranted that. And that is not what we are saying. We are looking at a predator and working backwards trying to figure out if we can um, identify the traits that they are interested in, we will know where prevention education needs to go. Um, we'll know who they are hunting and who they are targeting. I mean, they, they do the same thing in criminal profiling. Mm -hmm. You know, if a, if a serial killer has, you know, killed someone, they begin looking at putting together a profile and the traits of the person that they targeted to know who they're going to target again. Why not now? Mm -hmm. Why not do that with the most predatory people on the planet? They don't have to kill people in order to do profound damage to, um, uh, to people that they are in relationships with. So we sort of took that, you know, we, we call it pathology profiling mm -hmm. instead of criminal profiling. And we began to look at are there commonalities in the women that they pick? Are there um, any kind of trait elevations, anything that we can begin to explore deeper? And, and so um, the, the first go round, we tested about 75 women who had been in relationships with, with um, people in that low conscience. Um, spectrum and um, what we found were uh, were trait elevations that there were personality traits that were sort of off the Richter scale if you were going to look at them on a bell curve I mean there it did, there was no bell curve it looked like the Rocky Mountains coming off the end of the graph paper um, <laughs> I remember sending it to um, the creator of the instrument, you know, and he said, holy cow, that's mm -hmm. not what I expected to see. And so um, what we found were elevations in, in traits like um, hyper empathy, really high levels of empathy, um, high levels of tolerance, very high in what we call relationship investment meaning that they are highly uh, um, emotionally um, invested in, in their relationships. They're not, you know, casual kind, kinds of relationship. High levels of cooperation, trust, loyalty. Um, trust being um, what we call blind trust. Mm -hmm. they, that they, they may not know that person from Adam and, um, or may have known them a brief amount of time and, and yet um, put all their, their eggs, if you will, in someone's basket with, without um, necessarily proof of, tr you know, that that person is trustworthy. Same thing with loyalty. Uh, um, uh, um, we call it insane loyalty. Um, in, in which even when there's um, violations that, that happen as the relationship progresses, um, they don't tend to respond to loyalty violations the way that people who don't have these trait elevations. Um, and, and so there, there were 26, I believe, um, uh, trait elevations. Mm -hmm. And so when you take that as a snapshot, you begin to look at someone that has high empathy, high tolerance, high relationship, high trust, high, you know, this is like a cocktail of personality for inevitable harm. And then you take, um, you know, a low conscience partner, um, who looks for people who has these kinds of traits and you have these relationships of inevitable harm. And so that was our first go round and looking at um, utilizing the, this one instrument um, to see. And so 
now we're going back through again and um, in partnership with Purdue University we are doing it again with another um, instrument and um, from all sort of predictions that we're seeing uh, as things are beginning to come in is that we're going to get the same outcome that there really is um, a personality profile of people that psychopaths tend to target. We'll be hearing much more from Sandra L. Brown this month on Good Morning Florida Keys. When I return this morning, I'll be joined with clinical hypnotist Helen Basinger. Stay with me.